such a blessing, a blessing to be in the house of the Lord and to see everybody here. Thank God that you have made the sacrifice to be in the house of the Lord and to study the precious word of God. This evening, we're going to be continuing on the third installment of the conclusion of it all series. And I pray that the Lord has blessed you in this and that as we've looked at the life of Solomon through the book of Ecclesiastes, and we begin to see what, uh, maybe in greater detail, what the fear of the Lord is. I pray that God has helped you, has strengthened you, and has blessed you. So again, uh, the series is volume one was the concept. Volume two was the construction. And volume three was the conclusion. So tonight is going to be the end of it. Of course, it is the conclusion uh, stage or the end of this Bible study, and again, we're talking about the conclusion of times that we are living in, can somebody say amen, the conclusion of times by way of King Solomon and the book of Ecclesiastes. So if the Bible was like a puzzle, our position and our place would be fitting in the last pieces. We would see the dispensations that have come. We would have seen the patriarchs. We would have seen prophecies given, fulfilled, prophets, kings, leaders, judges, ministers, apostles. We would have seen all that. And as we have a panoramic view of what's happening, we can see and we're just putting in the last pieces. That's what stage that we are at. And if maybe you're not into puzzles, you don't understand what I'm talking about, Maybe I can say it like this, if the Bible were like a burrito. And we were in that time, it was like we would be the last ones eating that bite, the last bite. Some of you know what I'm talking about. There's a proper way to eat a burrito, and that's not, you, you don't defile the burrito by opening it after it has been sealed. But you take a bite off the top, and then you put little lemon, you put a little salsa, red and green on top, and every bite, you, you, you entertain that bite alone. <laughs> so by the time that you get to the bottom, oh my God, some of you are about to get the Holy Ghost right now. Because <laughs> there's something about the last bite of the burrito. I'll share the top, I'll share the middle with my wife, but that last bite is for myself. <laughs> We're at the end of what the Lord is doing. And I want you to understand this one thing that as we gather together, I really feel the Lord has impressed upon my heart to tell you this, that he really loves you all. He loves you very much. He loves you so much that he's given you a great bishop that can warn you of the times that we're living in. He loves our bishop to where he's giving them insight. And why don't we thank God for our bishop. We're not living in darkness. We, we know what's beyond the horizon. We know what's right around the corner. And it is because God has loved Bishop enough to give him information. And he has shared that with us. And he has taught us through the years as we're coming up on 40 years. Uh, we've been giving those, given those instructions that have prepared us for the Lord's soon return. And to understand what day and what hour that we live in. And I'm, I'm so very thankful for that. And I want you to understand that the Lord loves you because he has put you in a place where he has warned you and he's prepared you. Um, I'm thankful for that. Some of you have heard of the acronym that people talk about the Bible as the basic instructions before leaving earth. And I want you to focus on the word of God this evening because it is these instructions that are going to help us to get from a point of failure or discouragement or darkness or even death, potential death in our life to where He's going to project us into his presence. And I'm thankful for heaven that's around about the quarter, corner. And I'm thankful that God has blessed us. And, and I'm thankful that his love is just in our lives. I'm thankful that he loves us. Sometimes we look at the judgment and, and, and we talk about the fear of the Lord in the studies. But we have to understand that the Lord loves us so much. He loves you all. And he wants you to hear that. And we know the enemy is always in the ear with all the negativity and the destructive forces that he's trying to create in our lives. But the Lord loves us, and he's allowing us to see the big picture. He's allowing us to understand 
what is happening in the last days, and I pray that that gives you comfort, that helps you in your journey. Moses had carried the Israelites as far as he could. The next generation under Joshua was about to enter into the land. So all of Israel was concluding their wilderness journey. This 40-year pilgrimage was coming to an end, and one of the grand land promises that was given to Abraham was about to begin. A transfer was about to take place. So Deuteronomy 31 and tells us this. As Moses was dealing with jo uh, Joshua, and Moses commanded them, saying, at the end of every seven years, again, this is Deuteronomy 31 and 10, we're going to read, so if you're taking notes, we're going to read from De Deuteronomy 31 and 10 down through the 13th verse. At the end of every seven years, in the solemnity of the year of release, in the Feast of Tabernacles, when all Israel has come to appear before the Lord, thy God in the place which he shall choose. When you get in the land, he was telling them, you're going to have to read this law before all Israel in their hearing. Verse 12 says, gather the people together. Remember, during the Feast of Tabernacles, every seven years, gather them together for the hearing, uh, men, women, and children, and thy stranger that is within the gates, that they may hear, that they may learn, the fear of the Lord your God, and to observe to do all the words of this law. And their children, which have not known anything, may hear and learn to fear the Lord your God. As long as you live in the land, where do you go over Jordan to possess it? So, when in the land, during the Feast of Tabernacles, every seven years, they were to hear, they were to learn the words of the Lord, or the law of God, this would cause the fear of the Lord to fall upon them. And if they would do according to what it said, God would dwell among them, Israel would grow, and they would prosper. Can somebody say amen? amen. Now, we're bringing this up because there's a transfer that's going to happen from Moses to Joshua. The focus here is that they would focus on everything that was given to them according to the word of the Lord the law of God, and they would practice it. Moses told them, listen, this is what the Lord told me. Make sure when you enter into the land that you read the law in its entirety according to this feast every seven years, and that you would do everything that you hear, that you would do all the law. So then we go to Joshua 1 and 6. Here's what the Lord gave Joshua soon before they would live in houses that they didn't build, and vineyards, trees, and herb-yielding bushes they didn't plant. Joshua 1 and 6 reads, Be strong and of good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land, which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do what? According to all the law. I want you to get that into your heart and your spirit. Uh, to do according to all the law, which Moses my servant commanded thee, Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. Verse 8, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written thereof. I'm going to say that again. To observe to do according to all that is written therein. Excuse me. Verse 9 says, Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. So the Lord prepared the land flowing with milk and honey. He set them up with allotted properties and self-sustaining amenities. Israel's focus was to be this. Be strong and courageous to do all of the law to, everybody say keep, keep it by speaking publicly and personally about his glory and meditating upon its beauty, consequently prosperity and success shall follow. I'm going to give you the land, I'm going to put, I'm going to carry you there, 
I'm going to build houses for you. You're not going to have to plant anything. You're not going to have to build any houses. And when you get into the land, your focus should be on accomplishing the, the word of God, to doing all of it. Be courageous in doing the law. Be courageous in, in doing what the word of God is telling you to do. So we see this transfer from Moses to Joshua. And we see how the Lord is telling him, listen, even Joshua, you have to be courageous to do the whole law. In order, in other words, to keep it. They have to keep the law. So Joshua uh, had been gone for many years. Israel was in the land. They were about to see another leadership transfer. The throne was about to seat Solomon uh, as his father. David was at the end. And this is what he said to his young son, Solomon. This is what David tells Solomon. 1 Kings 2 and 1 through 4. 1 Kings 2 and 1 through 4 reads, Now the days of David drew nigh that he should die. And he charged Solomon his son, saying, I go the way of all the earth. Same, same message. He says, Be thou strong, therefore, and show thyself a man. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes and his commandments. Remember, keep, keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and his testimonies as it is written in the law of Moses, that thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest and whithersoever thou turnest thyself, that the Lord may continue his word, which he spoke concerning me, saying, if thy children take heed to their way to walk before me in truth, with all their heart and with all their soul, there shall not fail thee, said he, a man on the throne of Israel. So again, trying to make sure that I'm keeping your attention even though I'm giving you different passages and reading a lot. But the same message that was given to Moses and Joshua was given to Solomon. Be strong, be courageous. He even said, be a man about this. Keep the Lord's charge, keep his statutes, keep his judgments. Keep his testimonies. And again, keep. Everybody say keep. And most importantly, his commandments. Walk in his ways as it is written in the law of Moses. So when God would appoint a man to lead Israel, it was prefaced with this. Keep all of what has been written in the law. See it as precious and the Lord is going to prosper you. Keep all the law. Keep, keep everything. The challenge of every leader, the challenge of every believer today, and even back then and now is, with the Lord's promotions, with his gifts, with his promises, with his platforms, keep all of his ways, for they will keep you. Keep all of his ways. Remember, Solomon said, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, but again, Solomon's conclusion was what? Fear God and keep his commandments. Solomon's conclusion out of everything in life that he experienced was fear God, keep his commandments. Moses told Joshua, keep the commandments of the Lord. Saul, David tells Solomon, keep the commandments of the Lord as you lead Israel. So as we look at that, we have a pretty good understanding of what the fear of the Lord looks like. And I pray that you have a better one after this uh, series. But maybe it's a bit uh, murky as you look at what keeping his commandments really are. And maybe even especially in the time that we're living on, in. Um, fearing God, we get an understanding of what that is. But to keep his commandments, this is really what I want to spend time talking to you about this evening. And this is a revelation that God gave me. And I pray that if you get this into your spirit, there, there, there's going to be a, a change in your heart, in your mind. Because as you fear the Lord, and as you keep the commandments... There's a, there's a powerful blessing that begins to fall upon your life. So, keeping his commandments. John 14 and 15 tells us. I want you to find that place and then look down to the 23rd verse. John 14 and 23. We're going to read these two passages. John 14 and 15 is, If you love me, keep my commandments. Hmm, I wonder that how, how that applies to what Solomon was saying. Again, he says it in verse 23. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, 
He will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. So, there are two things that are going to keep us in the perfect will of God. I was talking to someone the other day. They were dealing with some problems, some secular issues. And as I was trying to help and give words of counsel, the Holy Ghost just stepped in and began to speak. And I said something that I had to go back and research because I really didn't understand the root of what was said. But I knew it was effective in, in the circumstance. And it was this, that there are two things that do keep us in the perfect will of God. And that is the fear of God and the love of God. The fear of God and the love of God. So, as, this, as what Solomon said in his two parts, we, we can look at it this way. When you fear him, if you're taking notes, take this down. There is a respect, honor, and reverence unto him. When you fear him, there is a respect, there's a love. When you have a perspective of a holy God, a sovereign God, it sets up your entire life. Because when you see him as holy, then you realize, man, he created the heavens and the earth. Our God is holy. He is just. He's powerful. Our God is loving, merciful, yet he's jealous, and he's a God of judgment against that which is evil. So when you see God for who he is, you have a respect and you have a reverence for who he is. This fear is what has kept me from my youth to today because I realize, my God, he don't play. He created the heavens and the earth, and, and, and if he wants, you know, any movement that he makes, uh, he, he, can, he can move in that manner if he would like to because he has that power. I'm thankful that he's a merciful, graceful God. But we have to see that side of him where when we see him for who he is, it causes us to have a reverence. It causes us to have a respect. Young people, make sure you get this in your spirit. This is going to carry you from your youth in, into the later stages of your life. When you can have a reverence and a respect for God, then it starts to spill out into every other part of your life. There's that honor and there's that nobility that God allows you to have. So when you fear him, there's a respect, honor, and reverence unto him. When you love him, there is a trust, there's an adoration, and there is a keeping, everybody say keeping, of his words and his ways. You can't have one without the other. If you just see him as this a sovereign, powerful God, but then there's no love and there's not the other side, then there's an imbalance. But we're so thankful that what Solomon said as a conclusion to fear God and keep his commandments, what he was saying is have reverence and respect for God and also love him by keeping his commandments. If you practice these two principles in your life, it'll transform your life because you're going to walk in the fear of God, the respect of God, but you're also going to walk in the love of God. And you really can't love him until you really see him for who he is and realize, my God, there is a response of faith according to the revelation that God has given me of himself. Because he's this wonderful God. How am, how am I going to love him? How am I going to keep commandments? Uh, it, it, it's by, by honoring the word of God. It's by honoring the word of God. Take this note. Respect makes way for love. Maybe your perspective of God has been skewed because of a, a parental figure or somebody when you were younger that was abusive or, or a father figure or a, a mother or somebody older than you that gave you a twisted perspective of people who, who were supposed to protect and love you. But when you respect God and when you when you look at him in that light, it causes a love to, to, to rise up in your life. I remember when I was younger, I, I served the Lord because mom and dad said so when I was very young. And then I had to go through my journey, my faith journey of, okay, bishop, elect lady said this is the way we're going to do it, so I, I, I'm going to be obedient to that. But then in time, I had to get to a point where I met certain crossroads and I had to make a decision for myself. Who do I know him as? What kind of God is he? And I had to make my personal decisions to realize that, you know what? 
the more that I had a respect for him, the more that I thought of his wonderful ways, and the more that I read in the book and the Bible of what he had done, it, it began to change my perspective. So then I realized there is a God, there is a heaven, there is a hell. And I'm going to have to honor him. I'm going to have to respect him. I'm going to have to love him. And the more that I read about him, the more that I fell in love with him. And the more that I fell in love with him, the more that I would keep the commandments, the more that I would keep the word of God in my heart. And the more that I would keep the word of God in my heart, his blessings, his prosperity, his peace, his joy, his love began to fall. He began to give me balance. He, he began to give me these things. Why? Because there was a love for him and there was a respect for him. And I'm here to tell you that in, in doing those things and practicing that, there, there is... There, is, there are bountiful blessings that the Lord has in store for you. So, the things that are going to keep you from carnal addictions, the things that are going to keep you from sin having dominion over your life, it, it is these two things. It's, it's the fear and it's the love of Jesus. Think about that. You know, when we get so angry, that's probably the most dangerous we are, right? When our flesh really rises up or... You know, we can get to a point where, like, you know, at this stage of my life, I'm willing to, like, you know, break the law and do things I shouldn't be doing. But there's always in the back of my mind, you know what? The fear of God's there. You can get so angry at times, and then you realize, I can't, I can't let this get the best of me. Because in doing so, I may, I, I may transgress things that, you know, may cause serious problems in my life. And I'm here to tell you, if you're fighting against any kind of uh, addiction that, that the enemy is using against your life, maybe you need a refresh on how you see God. Your perspective of God and what Solomon said, to fear God, to keep his commandments, that means to respect him and it also means to love him. To love him. If you love him, according to scriptures... It's going to change your life. So Solomon said it a little bit different. His conclusion was to fear him and keep his commandments. This is the same as to respect and to love him. To respect and to love him. Mark 12 and 28 through the 31st verse says, Mark 12, 28. And one of the scribes came and having heard them reasoning together... And perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, which is the first commandment of all? And Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord of God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. So loving God is loving all of his teachings, loving his laws, loving his statutes, commands, rules, instructions, testimonies, and ways. He says, the greatest commandment is to love God. Well, how are we going to love God? We know that we really love Jesus when, when we're able to take the word of God and with all our heart, soul, strength, and might, work those things out in our life. How can we love him in a way where we just embrace him or when he's not present? Um, our love for him is different. Our love for him is, is, is what he expects our love to be is, if you love me, keep my commandments. And when you keep his commandments and when you learn, young people, saints of God, when you learn to love the word of God in your life, you meditate upon it day and night instead of thinking about your feelings, your emotions, your situations. But when this becomes alive in you, when this becomes solid, your solid foundation, when this becomes your everything, all of a sudden you start, you, you practice that love for him by reading this, applying it to it, trusting in it, believing it. Then things start to happen in your life. Things start to change. Whatever people have done, whatever has happened to you, negative, uh, past traumas, whatever, it, it, it's going to uh, not be effective in your lives because the word of God is that powerful. Failures you've had, things that you've struggled with, God's going to allow you just to push through that season, through, through, that, through that 
that uh, trial, that situation, that storm. Why? Because you love God so much that you're going to trust him at his word's sake. For every situation, for every season. Uh, and consequently, when you really love Jesus, you're going to learn to learn, love excuse me, your neighbor correctly. When you really love the Lord, you have the patience that you're supposed to have. You have the kindness. You have the, the fruit of the Spirit that you're supposed to have. Why? Because your whole life consists of applying the Word of God to your life. Because, Lord, if I love you, that means I'm going to keep your commandments. And how are we going to keep the commandments unless we read the Word of God daily? Unless we hear preaching and subject ourselves to teaching? Unless, unless there's that active manna in our lives? We really can't love them the way that we're supposed to. But I'm so thankful that God has put that love in us. And again, he loves you so much that he has put you in a Bible-centered church. You know, I, I, I've seen a lot of churches online where they, you know, they, they have like five movie nights a month. They have these series that have to do with, they even take certain Disney and d different movies, and they pull biblical teachings out of this stuff, <laughs> you know, to a, to, so the people will get it, you know, and, and hey, if that's their thing, then have fun in, in, in that fantasy land. But, you know, with us, sometimes I feel bad because it's like I'm giving all these scriptures, and I know, man, if I keep reading this, some people may fall asleep, but then again, it's the word of life. All I know is the word of God. I, I, I can't give you a, a TV series to base a teaching on. I have to give you the word of God because this is what I was raised on. This is what's given me the strength, and I know that it's what is going to change your life. Entertainment is, is entertainment, but when we come to the house of God, I'm thankful that we have the word of God. As archaic as it may seem, yet this is what's going to allow us to get to where we need to, to be. Can somebody say amen? I really have lost where I stopped teaching. I have my Bible in my hand. I have a pen here. I'm ready for something. <laughs> Romans 5 and 5. Found it. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Romans 5 and 5. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God. We're talking about the love of God. Is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. Thankfully, the love of God is given to us by the Holy Ghost. We must simply continue in the gift that God has given us. That is through the continual hearing, through the continual learning, and the keeping of the words of life through the Holy Scriptures. So, the Holy Ghost gives you that love that you need to have. Thank God that he's given it to us. But it's your job to maintain it. It's your job to continue to feed that love. That's what we do when we continue to study, when we continue to assemble, we get together. Um, I know that you've experienced this in your life. I'm sure many of you recently, the more that you study the word of God and you have your personal devotional time, there are, there are things that God is revealing to you, and I know he is. And just opening your minds to things you've never seen, and you're experiencing new dimensions in God, all because you honor the word of God. And as you honor the word of God, he, he begins to bless you. Because through the Holy Ghost, he's giving you the love of God. Now we're just feeding that love and growing it. We're just maturing it. We're, 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 we're God, I want you to teach me the next lesson that you're going to give me. I, I'm, I'm telling you what, I have been so thankful that God has allowed me to preach and teach to you. Because in my personal time of studying these things, I, I feel the revelation and understanding. And I get excited and I'm so thankful that God has given me an opportunity to share with you what he has revealed to me in private. And it's a blessing. It's wonderful. The word of God is so amazing because we serve an awesome God. Can somebody say amen? amen. So our love to him is clear, clearly defined here when we apply our heart, when we, we activate our soul with every part of our mind, with uh, our complete body given to believing in and completing his word. So this is the love that he is speaking about. When we hear, when we learn, and when we keep. Everybody say keep. keep. 
We've got to keep the word of God in our heart. I, I just say this. Take a quick moment. There is strong competition that the devil's put in your life against the word of God and keeping it. It is hard for us in our time to focus on the word of God when we have social media, when we have uh, push notifications, when we have sports uh, 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 pop-ups coming up all the time, when we have um, Amazon telling us, hey, we got you know, a package or we want you to see what's for sale and you get 35% off of this. And you know, we have all these distractions, our news, uh, uh, you know, whatever it is, your news uh, app that sends you information, it's all competing for our mind so that sometimes we don't even think about the word of God. But I'm here to tell you that we have got to keep the word of God in our hearts. Because if we become so secular that there's no scripture in our life, then we're going to start to sin in a way that we can't keep up with what God has for us. So we have to realize, young people, you're in here for a reason. You have to learn to study. You have to learn how to put time aside to say, listen, I'm going to focus on a certain part of my day where I'm going to put my devices away and I'm just going to study the word of God. Because what, what the main lesson here is if you keep the word of God, as you keep the word of God, your love for God is going to grow in that. But how are you going to love God if you're not even reading your Bible? If the only time that you hear word is when you show up to the house of God and when you show up here you're not even focused, then that means that there's no word in you. That means that your emotions, your senses are going to get the best of you when you're out there in the world. But we're living in a time where, you know, the devil's ferocious right now. And he, he, he is just taking many captive. And we just want to make sure that, that we take advantage of the fact that God has made himself so close to us. And he's loved us so much that he has given us an opportunity to love him back. And not just that, he's going to make your life better as you serve him. And we're right around the corner to make heaven our home. I mean, it's a win-win situation. It's a blessing. But you have to honor the word of God. Let me encourage you, young people, honor the preaching. Don't try to use a restroom. Don't try to leave when, when the preaching and teaching is going forth. When the teaching is going forth, get off your phone. Focus on, on what you, what's happening. I learned at a very young age to honor um, when preaching and teaching is going forth. Honor it. It's ingrained in me. That when I sit down, I, I, I'm not messing around. I, I want to focus on what's being given. The rhema word that's fallen. It's feeding me. It's nourishing me. It's strengthening me. It's blessing me. And I, I'm here to tell you, if you honor the word of God, the word's going to carry you through. The word is going to bless your life. The Lord is wonderful. He is a wonderful God. So I'm going to take you to James 1 and 22 through verse 25. James 1 and 22. Through verse 25. Scripture reads, But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For any man be a hearer of the word, and not, be a, and not a doer. He is likened to a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. This man shall be blessed. We can't just hear the word, but we've got to apply it to our lives. We've got to apply it. I, I've, I've known a lot of backsliders that quote, chapter, and verse, but they couldn't live any of it, any of the principles. And they would get real smart and say, well, I, I understand these things. Yeah, you understand it, but can you live it? Can you activate it? Can you believe it? Can you practice it? Because there's a big difference. Learned but not lived, this can be the life of many Christians. Learned but not lived. We Know much, but live little. I'm going to say that again. We know much, but we live little. We've heard, maybe even can quote, but, can be, but are unable to perform his will, even though we can have a wealth of scriptural knowledge and all the needed resources at our fingertips. 
I'll give you a little tip here. Do the little that you really know, okay? Do the little that you really know, and let your testimony grow as your understanding does. A little tip from Pastor Jay today. <laughs> do the little that you really do know, and let your testimony grow as your understanding does. King Solomon was granted wisdom. He inherited a prestigious platform. He was divinely anointed and appointed over God's people and over his house. He wrote, he sang, he built, and partook of all the workings of his hands. His creations and projects were at the apex of what man could build. His father prepared like a king. Solomon stepped into the throne with more than enough. With more than enough. But with all his learning, and with all the pomp, with all the glory, there was one thing that knowledge and wisdom could not produce alone. That was, and please take note, living according to the purpose of all that he had. Living according to the purpose of all that he had. The purpose was to glorify God. It's to glorify God. And this is impossible when we know and don't show. Or have learned but have not lived. So write this down. Know and show. Learn and live. Know and show, learn and live. Don't just walk with scriptural head knowledge, but work it out throughout your day. Practice it. Believe it. Song of Solomon 1 and 6 tells us, I'm going to read you the back end of that verse. It says, they made me the keeper of the vineyards, but mine own vineyard have I not kept. Talking about the conclusion of it all. Solomon, in poetic fashion, gave us an important principle here. This is what he said in essence, paraphrased. I've worked on someone else's field while I've neglected my own. I've worked on somebody else's field while I've neglected my own. When you know what to do, apply it personally and implement it in your house before you do it publicly or for somebody else. Bishop gave me a principle a long time ago. Your first ministry is to your family, to your wife. And above all, that is my first ministry. Because if my ministry to my house, to my wife, is not correct, then I could be wasting my time up here, neglecting my house, but thinking I could help yours. King Solomon said, listen, I worked on somebody else's vineyard, but my own vineyard have I not kept. When we have knowledge, when we have wisdom, when we have kept the words of God in us, we're going to work on self above everything else. We're going to take, we're going to take the, uh, the beam out of our eye before we see the splinter in somebody else's. We're going to look at our family, we're going to look at our household before we judge in others. You know, make sure, if you're disciplining other kids, make sure you're disciplining your own first. Can somebody say Amen. Make sure your own kids are disciplined before you get on others. Or look at your own kids before you're complaining about somebody else. Make sure our houses are, are the point of our focus. The most important thing is that we make sure that we're not being hypocritical of the things that we understand, but that we're applying it and practicing it in our own private life. Can somebody say amen? Practice what you preach before you declare it aloud. Practice what you preach before you declare it aloud. In closing, Psalms 1 and 19 and 92, unless thy law had been my delight, I should then have perished in mine affliction. Unless thy law had been my delight, I should have perished in mine affliction. When you learn to delight in the things of the Lord, it just makes everything different. When you learn to practice a, le a level of, 
self-sacrifice or discipline or whatever it is so that you honor the things that God honors and you love the things that God loves, it, it becomes a joy in your life. It, it, it becomes a, a passion of yours to do the will of God so that you're doing it for God, but there's an attitude because you see a great sovereign God who as great and as powerful as he is, he's been gracious, he's been merciful to us. And he has given us insights and understanding so that we know how to deal with him. We know to have, have faith in him. We know how to love him. Lord, the way I love you is by keeping your commandments, by keeping your word. We have to learn how to love the word. I don't understand why so many churches say, you don't have to do this and you don't have to do that. You don't have to read that book and you don't have to study that scripture. We should look at it all and say, I want to understand it all. I want to apply all of it to my life. I, I want every part of the word in my life. Jude 20 and 21 says, but, be, but ye beloved, building up yourself on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourself in the love of God. Saints, keep yourself in the love of God. Don't forsake your first love. Don't forget your first love. But because he loved you, God sent his only begotten son for us, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We serve a wonderful God. We serve a, an amazing God. And all he wants is for you to love him back. But we have to learn to love him back according to the scriptures, not according to our own personality, our own ways, or our own persuasion. But we have to learn to love him according to what he said in the holy scriptures. Remember, we're living in the last days, and in our conclusion, I pray that it's one of a great testimony, that our lives, as we begin to wrap up our, our earthly trek here, our pilgrimage, I pray that we do it with joy, we do it with an excitement for the things of the Lord, because it's all wrapping up, and, and we're about to, to hear that trumpet sound, and I'm so excited for what God is doing, and I pray that, one, that if, if you didn't get anything else from this lesson, that you remember these two principles that can change your life. That is to fear and respect God and to love him by keeping your commandments. His commandments, excuse me, not your commandments. His commandments. Don't write your own book. Don't write your own laws. But that we would fear him and that we would keep his commandments in our hearts. Would you stand with me? Pray that you would meditate on, on these passages. I've given you a lot of scriptures, and it's hard to go over all of them and, and for you to get, but get it all here in one shot. But I pray that you would take those home, or when we post these um, on YouTube, that you would go through them. I believe that Lord is going to give you even a double blessing. Can somebody say amen?